this one, but it'll be the... With all the details and stuff. There's not a lot of variation of color in there, so if we could do anything just to maybe like little highlights of rust or something like that. Here we go. And roll sound. Sounds good. A mark. And action. Robert. Robert really wanted to play Tony Stark, and I really wanted him to play Tony Stark. It wasn't the most obvious choice from a studio's point of view. Unfortunately, Marvel is a new studio with a lot of freedom. We weren't dealing with the classic studio system where they have their lists that they generate. There was a lot of freedom to, to cast uh, the best person for the role because uh, fortunately with Marvel movies, the image of the superhero is in fact the big draw, the big star. And they've learned that they've had a lot of success in the past when they've hired people who were good, interesting actors and relied upon the name of the brand itself to, to sort of be the thing that becomes the rallying cry uh, from a commercial standpoint. You then are able to try to make the best movie possible. Luther, how dare you refuse the great objects of Carl? You're only alive because of his generosity. You are nothing, nothing! You understand me? People have drawn parallels to the character in his own life, but that wasn't by any means the decision uh, or part of the criteria by which we chose him. He's a tremendous American actor who has an incredible body of work and I think has the personality of Tony Stark. He has the look that sort of matches with the comic books. There's sort of a childlike quality to Robert. There's an imagination to Robert that is very similar to Tony Stark, who's an inventor. There's a sense of humor to Robert, which Tony shared, there's a confidence. There were just so many qualities as you began to look through the history of the comic books and who Tony Stark was and really who Robert is as an actor and as a person. That allowed the great Genghis Khan to rule from the Pacific to the Ukraine. The really fun part about the cave set is the dressing inside. What is life like when you're locked up in a room like that for like two or three months? And Robert you know, brought a lot of his own personal experience to the cave too, which was fantastic. I mean, he, he taught us how you make tea in prison with the, the nice sock, or how you make coffee, uh, and how you play games, you make backgammon sets out of nothing, things like that. With Robert in the, in the Iron Man suit, we tried to keep it at a minimum for him. We'd try and keep it at a partial suit for him so he could, he could do his acting because it's, it's so restrictive in that suit. And then we would let you know, ILM fill in those blanks where the suit would be full. Stop. 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 Come on. Please. Get up. Get up. As an actor, I've never gone through a process like this before, because usually you have a written page and you have a definite set idea of what it's going to be like. But we really found Jensen doing uh, rehearsals, sitting around the table and just talking. And uh, the fantastic thing about this project has been everybody's been so open. Do you maybe could shave about 90 seconds off your death would be nice, because it's a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Leading over there. Well, you heard me. Robert Downey is just a, it's just a jeweler. <laughs> My girlfriend says, I, I think you're in love with him or something. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to witness the art. Fantastic. We like to keep them a bit wet as they look even more fantastic. How's it going, Half? Oh, sorry, thought you were someone else. <laughs> it's okay, I get this all the time. Now then, I get it right, probably. Cut! Cut! Ladies and gentlemen, that's a camera wrap on the creator of Iron Man. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Say the best weapon is one you never have to fire. I respectfully disagree. I prefer the weapon you only have to fire once. That's how Dad did it. That's how America does it. <laughs> and it's worked out pretty well so far. <laughs> wide, wide out the whole frame. That's, that's yes! Awesome. yes! <laughs> For your consideration, the Jericho.
The Jericho, 1001, 1000. Bang. And it's doubling for uh, for what we what we're suggesting are the mountains of Afghanistan. I think they did Gunga Din out here. I know they did a lot of westerns out here. Uh, this particular angle works really well for for Afghanistan. But if you look different ways, you, you the different rock formations uh, make you feel like you're out in the west. Here we're on, on protected land, so there are a lot of parameters that we have to observe to shoot here. But but the trouble that we went through is well worth it because it really gives you a look like we traveled halfway around the world. When you get to work with the guys at the top of the field, you just go, okay, that thing's gonna blow up in back of me and I'm gonna be okay. Or you get hit with like a little frag and everyone runs over because you're like, you know, the star of the movie and you're like, my God, man, 10 years ago, I could have gotten knocked off my ass and have stuff stuck in my skin and people would be like, all right, back to one. Because if you're not down, then you're not out. I was pretty blown away by how much we were able to do at such close proximity and but I'll tell you you know it, it definitely helps you kick up some dust when you know what you're running away from. <laughs> John brought everything. John is the primal force behind Iron Man. He's easily half the character. He's infused himself into every department. He's an, I won't say he's a gentle giant because he's very formidable, but he is the most composed person in a position of unimaginable stress that I've ever seen. He's so gracious and so evolved. Robert, you're just, you're just you're such a good actor. You got that? <laughs> That said, he's a pain in my ass. He's checking his goddamn Blackberry and texting and putting things up on MySpace while I'm out there dying. But he's that kind of big brother, too. You know, it's like he didn't call me out to, you know, pitch for his team and then, like, come and, you know, ice my wrist when it got sore. He's like, you're a grown man. This is going to be really hard. I told you it was. And sometimes I'm a million percent there for you, and sometimes I'm just going to watch you do whatever you're going to do because it's not up to me to take care of your feelings. You're a grown man. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, pretty good. It's, pretty good. it's pretty good. Thank you everybody, crew of Iron Man. Excellent week. Really great week, guys. Windy today. Wasn't like this when we scouted it. We're gonna shoot uh, Tony landing in the sand dunes after he escapes from the uh, from the cave, and then walking through the desert. We got two marine helicopters coming out here. I don't know if we're gonna be able to land them. Here we go. Pictures up. It was sandstorming. It was kicking up so hard, and I just remember. Laying there, buried waist deep in all this gear. And, and I just remember kind of, I was inside the helmet and I just had this great moment of gratitude to kind of the elements and what a privilege it was to be able to be there playing this guy with the caliber of people I was working with. Special effects, we got this. <laughs> hey, we need three cakes to fill all the candles. <laughs> Light it up. I just said, wow, man, what a cool deal. What a cool suit, what a great crew, what a blast. Yeah. Come on now. Tony Stark. Yeah, quick. Is that clear? 